Hi, I'm Jeff Powell, and I'm here at uh, my vinyl mastering room. My business is called Takeout Vinyl, and I'm located in the middle of what used to be, this was the B control room at Sam Phillips Recording Service. This is the building that Sam Phillips, who largely is considered the man who invented rock and roll. In 1959, he bought this building and converted it and designed basically every inch of it to be acoustically sound the way he wanted to hear things to where he felt you could record in almost every inch, nook and cranny of this building, which is what we do today. So since October 2015, I've cut well over a thousand records and I'm well on my way to 2,000 records here in this room on this machine. 2018, I was at the Making Vinyl Conference and some people from Stax Records got in touch with me. We want it to be in Memphis. We want this to be a Memphis project where you cut the lacquers off the original Master Stax tapes, they press it in Memphis, and it'll be a whole Memphis thing. I've done 14 titles for Stax now, and they're just now starting to come out. If anyone has any doubt, like I, maybe I did, maybe a little bit in the back of my mind, like does it really matter if it comes off the tape or not? It absolutely does. It, it just sounds amazing. And again, it's one of those knee-buckling experiences when you actually cut it and play it back and listen to it. It's, it's mind-blowing. Again, when I'm talking about the preview head and the program head, I want to explain briefly just what's going on there. So they're identical sets of playback electronics, which means the machine is aligned to the calibration tones that are on a tape that I'm using or on what's called an MRL, which is a laboratory tape that we use to basically for calibration to make sure everything is exactly the same. That needs to translate to my wall of gear that I have here. So everything that I'm doing to one side after it leaves the tape head, which is the playback, it has to be exactly the same going through my wall of gear where I'm going to be manipulating it slightly. And once I'm happy with it, then I actually cut a little piece to the vinyl and I play it back. Now once again, I can play it back from there and measure what have I just cut? Where was it coming from? Am I better? Did I handle some of these harsh problems that are coming through? Does it sound beautiful? Would I buy this record? So what I need to do is I need to have a stereo pair of every piece of gear that I'm listening to that I'm actually cutting from it needs to also go to the preview head, the Zuma computer as it were, as basically a detector circuit to let the cutter head know what's coming one revolution later. If I had put a stereo EQ on one piece and don't do it on the preview, it's going to give a false reading to the detector and it's either going to make it waste space or it's going to think it doesn't need as much, it's going to cram the grooves together and it's going to lock it out. It's going to be a locked groove and it's unusable and you just blew the side. Now I want to kind of take you through my danger system that I have here and with the way I use it. So as it hits my chain, the first thing that I have in the chain is a Spectrosonics V610. They work great for mic pre's, they're great limiters, they're great compressors. But what I'm using it for is its peak limiting ability and its speed. And the whole theory of the way the Spectrosonics gear works, works for vinyl just to knock down those electronic peaks, which now what I am working with is the music and not these peaks that are going to cause my compressors to overreact to transients and things like that. So I level match two sets of those, make sure they're coming through, keep it pretty much at unity gain. And that goes into my dangerous compressor, which I have two stereo compressors. These are great in the, ins in the sense that they're very versatile, but one of the great things that I did not know about when I got these compressors was there's a button called a sibilance boost. And I just laughed when I saw the, what it was titled because I'm like, I spend my entire time fighting against it. Why the hell would I want to boost it? But what it is, that's basically a, a sidechain detector circuit that it will boost the high end and the, set up the compressor to react to the high end that's coming in that could be offensive. So again, if something's just a harsh mix in general, I can push that in and treat and just knock it back, just a dB even, man. Sometimes not even that much, just tickle it. And it makes so much difference. It just, it brings the beauty back out of it. In my system, I'm going from the compressor into the back CQ. It's always a starting place where I start off with a high pass filter. There's a certain amount of low end, usually at an 18 dB per octave slope, which isn't drastic. Most of the time that's subtle enough to where it gets rid of any rumble or noise that's down there that's gonna eat up real estate and not give you anything 
sonically more beautiful. Then, where it really reveals itself, when you take it away, you close your eyes and you put it back in, it's an, what I call an ah moment. It's when, you, when it's in, it should be like, ah. When you take it away, that's not as good. I want to talk about the Dangerous Master for a minute here. So I was familiar with the normal Dangerous Master, but I'd been talking to Chris. He just called me one day. I'm going to build you a custom Dangerous Master. And I said, okay, so let's do it. But it's serial number 001 in the sense that this is the first one made for vinyl mastering. So I'm really proud of it too. And it, of course it sounds amazing, but the difference in this one, it has basically two stereo sets of inputs and returns for everything instead of just the one stereo, which allows me to control what's going to the preview side and to the program side all at once. So it's super handy. It's got this cool thing on insert two called SNM, which is basically like an MS matrix. If you engage that button on your insert two, whatever's plugged into insert two, you have uh, an SNM width control. So you can actually play around with th making things more stereo, or you can actually bring it in and fold it a little bit. That came in real handy on some of the tape jobs. Like on the Johnny Taylor record, I remember the vocal was all, up. it was just the vocal, and like a shaker on one side, and the whole rest of the band is over here. So I was able to collapse it a little bit without fundamentally changing the recording, and I could still play it against the original pressing. Couldn't really tell what I was doing, but I feel like I was able to make a much better cut. The phasing wasn't so bad. So again, I've described earlier where you get this hourglass wave. On a cheap system, the needle could pop out of the groove. So the Dangerous Gear, more than any other gear that I've really used, it's so pertinent to what I do with vinyl that it just gives me another level of confidence to do what I would do and hear what I hear and act upon what I hear, knowing that this certainly isn't going to ruin it, but it's only going to make it better. I absolutely love them and I absolutely can't do without them. You know, if that went away, I'm done.